Got her. That's her. That is her. Dude, dude, Mike, it's a humongous tiger. Oh my god, dude. Here yeah, we got her. Oh my gosh. We got her. Holy cow. The Gadorzy hog. Dude! Dude! Welcome to the Musky Therapy Podcast. Please follow me this way. The doctor is ready to see you now. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Musky Therapy Podcast. I don't know about you guys, but I am definitely in need of some musky therapy. And on this episode, we have one of the most special guests we've ever had the pleasure of, of having on musky therapy. This person is a national freshwater Hall of Fame legendary anchor, uh, angler, he has been an on-camera talent for over 30 years. You th- he is the host of uh, the award-winning TV series Fishing with Joe Booker. Up, oh, I ruined it. That's who. That's who's on the show. It's Joe Booker. Uh, but I got to keep going, Joe. I'm sorry. You, you've done so many things uh, in, in this sport. Guys, Joe has authored uh, over six, seven books. Joe, maybe you could even correct me later. How many books? My favorite of those is Crankbait Secrets. Joe's the founder of Musky Hunter Magazine, and for those of you who are listening, um, and you're, you're, you're probably all over Musky 360 already, but you've, you've probably seen Joe's uh, YouTube series, the Fishing with Joe Booker YouTube series that's available 365, 24-7. Um, Joe Booker, welcome to the show. Dude, <laughs> it's great to be with you. What's going on down there? Dude, you know, I my mind, uh, you know, now that the the ice is receding, you know, I'm I'm starting to think I'm starting to think open water finally. It's been it's been a long uh, winter, I guess here, uh, you know, in 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 the North Country. Um, it, we've had record snowfalls, but more importantly, dude. I want to know more about what you've been up to because everybody that follows you knows that, man, have you, well, you and Beth, just like you've been, you've been having a wonderful time in Florida, but boy, have you been putting a hurt on those redfish and, and the speckled trout? I mean, what's, what have you been up to, man? I, you're, you have more, way more exciting stories than I do. (laughs) Well, you know, it's, you know, a few years ago, especially right when the COVID thing started, uh, you know, Beth and I decided, eh, hey, let's let's start spending our winters in in, in Florida. Actually, it, it actually actually happened before that. We 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 wanted to, you know, right around the uh, the age sixty five, we wanted to kind of be kind of free and alive at sixty five. In other words, I had I had uh, several of my my dad, my grandfather. Um, you know, these guys never made 70 years old. So I, you know, they work, 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 work. And I, I, I wanted to just have kind of a different path. And we, and, you know, we decided let's, you know, let's, let's kind of shock everybody and, and sell everything. And, and let's just kind of just change and change, turn, turn a page, so to speak, and start doing something different. And so we, you know, we start, we, 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 we made the kind of an agreement. We we're going to start spending our winters in Florida and you know our summers in wisconsin but our winters in florida and so <clears throat> instead of shoveling snow and you know and, and watching tip-ups and doing all that kind of stuff you know <laughs> I, I went down there and I, I towed a boat down there and uh, it's not that i never fished in florida before but i you know was always on a week or a two-week thing or you know a weekend thing i never really i never had a boat down there to really go after these fish um and you know when i did spend a lot of time in florida uh, initially, if you remember, I was doing a, a lot of trophy bass fishing. Yes, yes. So I really, you know, my first thing, my first venture with, uh, you know, with this Florida fishing was to hunt big bass. And, and I guess, I guess where I'm going with this part of it is that fishing for big fish, you know, there's all these common denominators. If, if you're a musky, you know, most of the people that listen to your podcast are musky anglers. But musky anglers <clears throat> only fish muskies. I think they miss out on, on, on tremendous opportunities to, they have the skills. Musky anglers have the skills. And, of course, they have the determination and the passion and the perseverance you know, which comes with musky fishing that, that, you know, you can just jump into hunting any other species of fish and you'll do really well just because of your passion and your determination, your perseverance. And, and this is always, 
always, you know, always done real well for me on no matter what I, what kind of, uh, whether it's hunting or it's fishing is, you know, just taking that musky mentality and then just going, to, going in a different direction. I did this, this trophy bass thing, which you saw a few years, you know, maybe a yeah. decade ago. Oh, yeah. And I, you know, I just said, you know, I'm going to go catch, you know, eight, 10, 12 pound bass. I'm going to go over and learn how to really do this. Cause I had the bass fishing skills, went down there and, you know, did that. And, you know, in fact, caught a couple line class world records and, you know, all that kind of stuff, but it was, it was fantastic. But anyways, well, I was down there and I'd be, you know, I'd go out to seafood restaurants and whatnot. I'd see, you know, these, all these pictures of salt water and brackish water fish and, that were much bigger. And, and, uh, you know, talking to people down there, I was like, oh man, you think that, a, you know, bass fights hard or a muskie fights hard. You ought to hook into one of these, you know, these bull reds, these big redfish. And, uh, you know, and I, I finally gave it a try and it was like, oh, okay, this is really something to this, you know? And, uh, long and short of it is I just turned, you know, turned all the valves wide open and in my, in my quest to truly learn, this was fun for me, Chaz, because that, you know, in my late sixties, all of a sudden go from knowing a lot about freshwater fish, a lot, you know, from, from, from hunting them for decades, whether it was bass or muskies or walleyes or whatever, go, to go into a completely different environment, saltwater, brackish water, fishing for species of fish I never fished for before and saying, okay, you know, wise guy, if you think you, you think you know what you're doing here, now you're going to take all this stuff that, that has worked for you in fresh water. Will it apply? You know, will these concepts apply well, in, the, in, in, in the Southern environment? And that's, you know, that's, that took me down this path, which led me to, you know, eventually, just like anything we do in life, just like we do anything on the water, is, is you know, the more you learn, the luckier you get, right? I mean, so the well, more I learned about, once I started to really, you know, really score some touchdowns, so to speak, you know, I, I started to learn more about this, and three years in, you know, I started banging a lot of these big bull reds. So, oh, yeah, it's been dude, fun. we you've been you've been blowing up the feed with with giant fish. But you hit on my next question, and I actually think this is this is just as exciting as, as talking about early season muskies, which we'll get to. But you you said this, and I actually am really curious because here I am. I, I've seen all your photos. I, I follow all your stuff from your info, your, your, you know, your short videos and all the photos. And it's like, okay, how does one Take and I think all of us listeners here can 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 take a lot from this. How does one take their experiences from Wisconsin and Minnesota and all your Canadian experiences and translate that to a saltwater or a brackish water environment? And the reason I'm asking that is okay. And I'm and I'm definitely an outsider when it comes to the saltwater fishing. I see these photos and it looks like the expanse behind you is truly giant. You know, we look at like yes. let's say for example the Three Lakes chains. You know, maybe maybe 8,000 acres and you're fishing water that is truly has access to to humongous water and then not only that but and you and I have spoken about this over the years as you've as you've really un, unpacked this saltwater thing you've got the tides to deal with which is a yes. whole other animal so how do you yes. how did you start kind of picking this thing apart because to me it seems like this is much different than picking apart like even a, a 5,000 acre lake this is we're, we're talking you know we're talking millions and millions and millions of acres. I mean, it's it's yes. expansive. How do you, how did you go about? <laughs> yeah, I mean, how do you even hear you're laughing about this? How do you go about breaking yeah. this down or even starting to put a pattern together? Because I have, you yeah, know, there was a lot to learn. There was a lot to learn. You know, the tide thing. What uh, you know, the, to make to make the tide thing simple. What I started to do was, you know, I kept an eye on the tides every day. And so, you know, for those listening that don't understand tides, you know, we, we study, we watch the moon and muskies, right? We watch, the, yes. we, we, yes. we can the moon for muskies. It, 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 this moon and, 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 and its influence on tides and, and, you know, in the ocean environment is, is just, a, it's astounding because you'll be fishing a section of water, for example, that um, might be dry or six inches of water over it. And then you come back eight hours later and there's 10 feet of water now see that so, is wild i mean oh, oh it gosh. is it is so what i i tell you one of the things i did to simplify this you know th th there's so there's a bunch of things i did but i um and i sent you some of it just to show you what i was doing yes is every time i catch a big redfish 
I would immediately take a photograph of where the tide was. I take a, you know, uh, I had, you know. Oh, so you're looking at the shoreline for a visual perspective of that's where the water was? was No, I was taking a photograph of the tidal graph, you know. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. You know, where we were, where we were, where where were we on low tide, we're on high tide. And, you know, so I, so I started building this library, uh, this log of, of, you know, success, and I and I then here's the other thing is, is when I when I went out and I, and I didn't have success I took photographs of that too. And then you know I but it took it took three years but after three years I could I could I, I I could look at those tides now just on a graph before I even go out fishing go. This is when the best time to go. Wow. Yeah, and and it isn't that they don't bite. And the bad times is you you have to move you have you you have to be constantly thinking you know about where these fish will move to there's there's all kinds of factors that go beyond uh, um you know we'll be doing fresh water but to to, to simplify <clears throat> to simplify what i did in, in uh, the, to get the success in salt water is it was very comparable to what i did in lake of the woods i first took you you to lake of the woods years ago if you remember, oh, yeah. we, would atta- we would attack <laughs> small, we would take Lake of the Woods, you know, a gigantic body of water, right? And we would we would break it down into sections, and then you and I would just fish that section. And if we scored in that little section, um, we'd learn more about it. <clears throat> if we didn't score in that section, we were out of there, and we'd go to another spot. And so well, that's one of the things they did do. I did a lot of you know, run, gun, run, gun, run, gun, you know, no success, no success. Oh, got one, you know, no success, no success. No, you know, so then I started, you know, putting things together. One of the things that really made, made the whole saltwater thing simple for me or simplified it more for me was, was, uh, was going from the inside out. And what does that mean? That's a very interesting uh, way to put it. Yeah. So, in the environment where I fish, and, and really up and down the whole coastline from Texas, you know, through Louisiana and Alabama and into Florida, you have these backwater, you have the you have the Gulf of Mexico, and then you have these, inside the Gulf of Mexico, you have these bayous and bays, and then inside those bays, you have tributaries, Okay. All right, so what all I right. started to do, so what I started to do was go from the inside, the tributary. I'd take a tributary, put my boat in at the beginning of a tributary, and just fish my way out of that tributary. <clears throat> you know, learning it, you know, fast fishing it until I learned some water. And then when I would score, um, you know, that became data. Everything, everything you do, and anything you do in fishing is data. You know, especially if you score on something. And that's one one of the things, you know, that, that folks always got to be thinking about is, you know, when you catch a muskie, that's data. That, you know, that's what 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 went right at that particular moment. What went right the day you got your 54-incher with me? Yes. yes. What went right <laughs> that day? Why wasn't there another fish like that on that spot ever before or since? You know, the, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. And so... So you know, looking at the looking at the saltwater, brackish water, fresh water. See the tributaries. A lot of tributaries I fished were fresh water. And then they, yeah. And then they, you know, it, and then the, and then as you go into the the bayou part of it, you get out the tributary, it becomes brackish water, and then you go out into the actual Gulf, it becomes saltwater. And and what what you know what I learned, it took it took it took a while, but what I learned is the the migrations and the patterns of these big fish. The, in the winter, they would be up in these tributaries. Some of some of these fish would be up in these tributaries, and then I could just follow them. And then I would watch. By the way, in these tributaries, I could see the influence, the visual influence of the tide on a daily basis. You know, when you put your boat in, when you put your boat in the water, you put your boat in the water one day, and you have trouble putting your boat in because the tide's so low. And the next day, you 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 know, the water's almost over the dock. Wow! So you literally have to follow the tides when you're launching your boat at any different places and it's like wow yep yep Yep. and then and 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 you got to build on success and you have to you have to you know walk back and 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 from your failures too you know so you know it's just like anything we do and you know musky fishing there's a lot of failure um in terms of scoring 
Um, and then you just learn from that. You know, it's it's just uh, I, I I don't know if I was clear in what I, what I tried to describe to you, but that's kind of what I did. I kept a lot of notes. Well, oh, every means... every time I'll tell you what else I did. Every time, and I do this with you've seen me do this with muskies we caught. You know, and I it, every time I caught a big red, every time I catch a big muskie, I take the time to, to write down everything I, I everything I can write down about that fish. Um, and I can show you if you were sitting in front of me right now. Um, I could show you that I have a you know on, on my on my photo library I have a caption. Um, file on every one of my photos, and I can I can slide that caption down, and it'll tell you water temperature, tide, you know, wind direction. You know, wow! Just, just all these things are in that, so I can look back at that, you know, from one photo of the next to the next. And is there? A, there's still so much to learn. There's so much I don't know. Um, and the in the and the problem with the saltwater environment, and we've seen this on the big waters like Lake of the Woods when you and I are fishing these bigger waters, but you see it even on these chains. These fish are so darn migratory, and in the big in the big ocean, you know, environment, you know, it's trying to stay on top of these I fish. Could, well, I was going to ask you, and I, yeah, we could do a whole podcast on this because it's fast. It's honestly, to me, it's it's fascinating to to hear about your experience. Are these are the bull reds, in a sense, like you know, a Northwoods fifty two inch muskie? Like, are they like, are, are they you know, they're they're I'm assuming they're rarer to catch. I mean, or are they, do they live? Are they, are they more like I, I what I'm imagining are like the, the mid range size fish are more packed up in schools. And then you got these tanks that are, are they solo? Are they in packs? Like what's the whole situation with those? Well, what's, what I did learn <clears throat> is that first of all, you know, a lot of locals in Florida and where I fish didn't even know these size of these size of redfish existed. And what the what the locals and I say locals locals not 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 just the charter cap the charter captains which are they're all excellent fishermen, but you know the charter business down there even unlike what you do in, in guiding for musky anglers charter guys are fishing with really inexperienced anglers. Yes, you know families uh, and you know Florida vacations and, are, and yeah and a lot of these people you know even the charter captains even got to make the cast. Oh wow! You know, yeah, they're really inexperienced. You know, and and so. Um, so it's a live bait game, you know, it's, it's a shallow water sight fishing game. A lot of times it's, you know, it's, it's, it's anchor up in the spot and, you know, wait for the bobber to go down or, you know, if they're fishing a live bait rig and, you know, current, that's what they do. It's live bait almost a hundred percent. And, you know, they're trying to put fish in the box and, 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 you know, so they, they've had success. Me on the other hand, you know, think about this, Chaz Martin, you'd you fit in perfectly. Well, I, it's crankbait secrets. I'm hunting, <laughs> I'm hunting big fish. I, I could care less about, you know, I'm going, here's the thing. I, I can catch, I can catch fish to eat down, down there in Florida, you know, within a couple hours. <clears throat> you know, and in fact, a lot of times, you know, when I, after, after, well, and that's, after, that's when the 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 uh, the speckled trout are on the uh, the yeah. cast iron pan, and I <laughs> yeah exactly you know and, 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 and you know slot reds what they call slot reds was the smaller medium sized fish. I will go after those fish towards the end of the day, or on an off tide on an off you know on an off time of the day and catch supper. And then the rest of the day, I hunt for these hogs. Wow! And what I found is that. Uh, the reason I, I preface this by talking about the, what the local anglers down there do is they are sight fishing primarily. They fish at three feet of water or less, more than often two feet of water or less. If you look at all the all the all the, the fishing shows you can watch on TV, they're all fly fishing. Guys are standing on platforms and pulling through shallow water. They are they are eyeballing fish and they catch an occasional occasional bull, big bull. I'm catching. Tanks, you know, schools of schools of them, schools. Of okay, so you answered my question on that. Wow, schools of them. Get, get ready for this one. And one, it was one day where we would be hooked up on doubles, and the line would be screaming off of one reel and one and and off the other. Best got a hold of one rod. I got a hold of the other. Oh my and gosh! And we just got, yeah, we just got to just hold <laughs> the rod and don't 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 but don't put any pressure on the fish. Put as little pressure on the fish as you can, so that you don't you don't encourage them to fight any harder. Wow! 
while you battle the other one for 15, 20, 25 minutes or more. And then you get that one in, then you, you know, then <laughs> quickly take a picture with the rod still on the rod holder with a big fish on the other land. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. But, but these big fish are these really big bull reds, at least when I'm hunting them in the winter, <clears throat> they're not shallow. Wow. So they're not shallow. I'm not, I'm not sight fishing at all. I'm not sight fishing at all. These guys are, all of the people around me are sight fishing. I'm not sight fishing at all. Now, you and I have done really well at times, even sight fishing muskies and some of these, Mm -hmm. you know, in the cuts Mm -hmm. and coves and stuff. But these big, these big bull reds, you know, what I learned is that they're just, they're different. You know, I think they feed on different things and they're just different. But I, you know, I kind of stumbled on, you know, using my, using the skills I developed over decades, I kind of just like, all right, Boog Daddy, go in there and well, and, okay. And so go that at, well, that leads him. me into the next, and and I I, I want to segue into muskies, but I, I think this will be a perfect question to segue into it. Is you've spent the you know your last three winters like really exclusively chasing bull reds and and targeting right. trophy fish in a completely different ball game? I, I think that's probably yeah. safe to say. It sounds like it's a different yeah. it's a different arena than the Northwood whole scene. Ball, and, whole different ball game. Yes. What is your you know is is a Hall of Fame angler? And you look at all your experiences from even from, you know, hunting trophy whitetails and everything you do. What's your biggest takeaway so far from, you know, cracking the code on this on this thing? Now, now you can say, OK, now I've I've caught these big bull rads and I've I've, yep. I've been able. What's your what's your biggest takeaway? Like, what do you what do you bring to Lake of the Woods with you next or what do you bring to your next endeavor? What has this taught you? I'll tell you what it really has taught me and in and, 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 and all humility. I tell you, I'm telling you this is that the more you think you know, the more the, the less you know. Oh God, that's and that's a scary it, thing to hear from you. <laughs> it, it's it's just unreal because I walk away from this winter catching you know three times as many reds as bulls as I did last year. Um, and I and what and and you know some of the things I learned from it was like. Oh my gosh, I was I was so close. Do you ever get that where you you know you with all the things you've learned the last two years? You ever look back and go, I was so close all those years. I was so right, close, and but, you never knew what was right under your nose I or the pattern. You just didn't right under my nose. I didn't know it. Yeah, and and with these bull reds, you know, you're out there pulling around looking for these the shallow water sight fishing bite when right behind you. You know, on a point, <clears throat> or what I'm, by the way, what I'm finding these big bull reds over a lot of times just flats, just flats outside of the current and stuff like that, where there's nobody out there. So I just make a trolling pass over the area and wham, wham, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hook Jeez. a couple, one or two big ones, turn around, put the spot lock on, and fire some crankbaits or you know, fire some rattle traps or. <clears throat> You know, some jig, big, big jigs and swim and, you know, and spoons I and mean, just pounding them on these spoons with a, with a lift drop retrieve, you know, it's all of a sudden it's just, you know, as soon as you hook one of these things, it's like you hooked into a, you, hook, you hooked into a train, <laughs> you know, it's just like, I've never seen anything like it. Oh. I've never seen big muskies do that stuff. But, but what I learned from what, what I, what I learned from this is that, there's so much there's so much out there to have fun at and there's so much to learn. You can never learn it all. And it's just it's just a gas because you know with these bull the, the, the mentality just like fishing tarpon, I'm gonna fish tarpon and snook and some of these other fish in the next few years too. But the the mentality, the musky fisherman, musky angler, the musky angler's mentality just is perfect for for hunting these big saltwater fish it's just so perfect because you know you just got to be able to dig in and and, and be determined and, and hunt for them and, and, and think outside the box once in a while you think, like our like our musky fishing you think about the the some of the biggest scores you've made like on your how you've unlocked a lot of the, the, the great patterns on on the waters you fish in northern wisconsin that you, you were close but you weren't quite there and now you're you're on them we're get while well, you're getting there, getting there. Yeah, and, 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 and that's right. And then at the same time, humbly you realize, holy cow, there's so much. No, oh, it's yet. it is absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, Joe. That's so this is and that is well. This it's a perfect segue, and I'm and I'm loving this because I believe me, it's funny. Even you and I have spent you know years and years together in the boat, and it's like I'm I'm still taking notes, and I'm I, you know you're getting me motivated to 
you know, just fire up my game on, on keeping track of, of catch records and everything. It's, it's just, it's never ending. It, it is, it is absolutely incredible. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is one, one of the exciting things, um, with having Joe on the show is, is of course his, his gift of knowledge when it comes to muskies. And so Joe, this is, we have a lot of listeners that are, that are veterans in the sport. And we have a lot of listeners, of course, as you know, that are just getting into the sport or they, or they're really, they're in their first five years and they're trying to learn, they're trying to learn. And, and one of the things that you and I, uh, you know, is, is you have, if for a guide for, for many decades and, and myself, I've seen this is people struggle when, when the ice gives way and we have cold water and, and we're in this, 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 this growth stage again, and right. everything is starting over again in the spring folks struggle to figure things out in in that in that arena when the water's cold and because again you know the classic scene for a musk angler you know is going up for a vacation around the you know mid late june fourth of july throwing the top water but when you you know have a vacation in late may or early june and the water temps are in the low 60s or maybe even in the upper 50s it's like Mm -hmm. what do you do it's like joe booker can you walk us through your secrets for early season muskie success? I know you've written about this in so many, you know, books and articles, but it's always, you know, it's it's hearing it again with all of your new experiences. Where, where is your head at? Well, I, I think I think whether you're, whether you're really experienced at this or not, I think it's simple uh, that the early season thing is simple because. You know, it, it, you, if you really want to be successful on these early season fish, my advice is find real shallow, real shallow water to start your to start your season out. Fish the shallow water. Now, I mean shallow water lakes, shallow water, you know, rivers, reservoirs, and lakes. Fish the shallow lakes, and you know, even in a chain, fish the shallowest lakes in that chain. You know, fish the shallow water. Uh, those real shallow bodies of water mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. because because they, they they warm faster and and it's you know it's, what I'm looking for is the warmest water I can find and the warmest water you can find generally speaking is you know it, early in the season is in in, uh, in shallow water you know, the lakes that have a shallow water basin to them, shallow, lakes that, that warm quickly, that have early ice outs, um, they'll have early wheat growth. And then once, and then I'll, so I'll concentrate on those shallow lakes, those shallow waters. And then once I get on those waters, I concentrate on sun baked areas, um, areas that get, so that would be the Northern sections of those lakes, channels in between multiple lakes where, you know, where, the water gets a chance to warm up even more especially late in the day i concentrate a lot more of my efforts after lunch early in the season the solar bite the solar effect early in the season most of these shallow water or these, these these species like muskies pike large mouse you know smallies they're looking they, they warm water is a key for them early in the season and and uh, you know if you can find warm water you're going to find bait fish. You're going to find active bait fish. You're going to usually find find muskies, and you're going to find some muskies. I think it's and, interesting and we'll, because go ahead. It, well, I think it's interesting that you said because I think is you know within the last let's say decade in the muskie world, everybody's focused on the moon, the moon, the moon, and I yeah. think we have a tendency to really turn away from you know the most powerful source of energy and an equally powerful pull on the earth is the sun right i mean that's like a huge part of the equation like as you're saying the heat well okay now let's just push the pause button a second okay in northwest florida in the winter when you get up in the morning in northwest florida it may be in the 30s it's most likely in the 40s at the at the at the most it's in the low 50s so I drag my feet, even in the winter down in Florida. I do not hit the water until late morning, and my best fishing is usually one to like three thirty in the afternoon. Hmm. Even the, so, those big bull even reds, in Florida, yes, they're catching those big bull reds, catching all those big large mouse. There's it's a solar bite. 
it, and those those speckled trout in the winter when you, when the when the when the shallows warm up and you see bait fish starting to move around the shallows you start to see stingrays and sharks swimming around and all kinds of things start to happen and you go oh baby here it comes and it's the same thing in shallow water or shallow water musky world you know if, if you you know just listening to your podcast for this this early season bite instead of being the early you know the early bird you know drag your feet a little bit but then really really hit it when you know, when you have when that sun is has been baking that shallow water for for three four hours or more especially if you get sun you know some days you just don't get that sun but if you get sun here's the other thing in in in, in the early part of the year you have you're more apt to have northerly winds which plays right into your hand with fishing yes. and, and seeking yes. out these nor- these northern areas because they're they're calm and protected, which which aids the solar bite, um, you know. And and um, you know what? It, one of the things you'll find out with with these shallow water muskies, uh, you know, in the solar bite early in the season, sometimes they're spooky because they're real shallow. Um, what you will find is that if you can find stained stained water, that coffee stained water, you know, turbid water. Stick with, sh- with with shallow basin lakes that warm quickly. You know, concentrate where the sun concentrate your 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 efforts on those areas where there's a lot of sunlight. But one of the th- one of the one of the sleeper spots is all are always these channels and and, and um, canals and channels between lakes. You've seen it on the chain. I mean, uh, you know, the Eagle Chain, one of my favorite guiding spots years ago on the Eagle Chain was always fishing between, like Catfish and Cranberry mm-hmm, Lake. Mm-hmm. That channel between Catfish and Cranberry. The channel between Catfish and uh, Eagle Lake, the, you know, the, the, the Voyager oh, Channel. Yeah, yeah. That's full of fish in the spring. You know, the, the um, going on Eagle Chain is going up into, um, um, I, it escapes me, the, the lake to the, the above Eagle to the, to the right. Um, Scattering is it scattering? Oh, rice? scattering rice, yeah, yep. yeah. You shallow basin, shallow lake, bingo, they're in there. You know, you fish the northern side of that. Cabbage is coming up, uh, but you know, a lot of times, a lot of times these these shallow muskies early season, they're just under docks, they're on sandbars. Um, you know, bulrushes and reeds in the spring. <clears throat> Man, you know, those lakes like you deserve. So you're Kentucky. you're reading my mind right now because I was going to ask you. I'm I'm picturing myself in your truck. We're we're you know hopping out of the Chevy. I'm backing you into one of these. We've picked a small lake, and here we are. It's like okay, so now we're on the north section, and you're looking for docks. You're looking for channels. You're looking for bull rush. Like, yeah. What do you, yeah. what else are you looking for cover wise? You're looking for, you know, cover, and rocks. Rocks. You know, you think about a couple, one of the last years I, I was filming heavy, and you were with me. Man, oh, we, yeah. you know, we were getting them on spinner baits. You know, and you, you know, you were making that long bomb cast with your with your <laughs> with, with your slot master up in there, and just slaying them on way up in that in those shallow bull rushes. There were rocks and bull rushes together remember that and you were getting oh, yeah. those really nice muskies doing that yes and um you know it, it's it's a shallow water bite it's a solar bite and more often than not also you know that's a that's a, it's a good small bait bite but the big thing is that, here's here's our here's another thing though it, it, in anglers always want to realize this too is that it's not that all the fish are in, are in there it's that the ones that are there are active that's yeah 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 you know it's you know are there any are there fish, are there fish doing other things yeah but they probably aren't act they're as active as these fish you know if you go if you got the, the main main lake water temperature of 52 degrees you know, per se but then you go up in the north side of the lake and you get out of the wind and you got some cuts up in there and there's there's a mud bottom bay and you're getting 60 degree water you're going to see minnows, <clears throat> you know, there's going to be perch and stuff swimming around up there, maybe some crappies in the spring. And if you got perch and crappies, you got bait fish up there, you're going to have muskies. There's okay, muskies so Joe, so here I right? am. I'm imagining myself, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling out the big camera. I'm putting it, I'm putting the top cam up. What's the first, and we're in the, we're in the North Bay. We're in a cut. We're, you know, let's, let's picture all the stuff you're kind of, you've been discussing. What's the first Let's 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 give folks that are listening kind of a, a picture of you of you attacking here. What's your first rod out of the out of the box? What's your first lure you're gonna you know? Let's say we're it's it's two thirty three p.m. I mean sun's out. Uh, you mm-hmm. know 
Weather is good. We, we you know light north breeze. We we found some more water. What's the fir- what's the kind of your 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 attack on this cold water situation? Right. You know, if if, if we're if we're fishing a late sunny afternoon, I'm probably get small spares. You know, small is you know small. If 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 I'm throwing a little spinner, you're probably going to be backing me up with a with a with a shallow raider. You know, a, a, you know some kind it's of a the bread and butter, the five hundred booger yeah, tail, the know, baby shallow raider. Yeah. And, you know, and the other thing, you know, what we found really works, and, you know, you and I have caught some monsters doing this, is throwing lipless crankbaits like the J.B. Rattler, running it hot and shallow. High rod, running it hot and shallow, running it real fast. And, you know, these fish will just smoke those things. Everything, the thing about lipless crankbaits is you can fish them in real shallow water, you can fish them in real deep water. You can fish them real slow, you can fish them real fast, and everything hits them, including all those saltwater fish, by the way, too. All those saltwater fish will hit lipless crankbaits. The only thing you got to do with the saltwater, saltwater fish is you got to beef up everything because they bust everything up. So, okay, so Joe, and so here's so here's a common question I get from, and, and, and my guy clients and listeners are going to love this. I can't wait to ask this. So you listen to the podcast, Joe Booker says, go north, uh, get out of the wind, you know, stained water, small lake. Um, and we're and let's say we find a patch of bulrush, dead bulrush, you know, it's got the mm-hmm. sun baking on it. And let's say we, we zero, we don't do anything and we, and we're working this and, and mm-hmm. we're up there and we're, let's say we're struggling and a lot of anglers still do. So what's, where is your head going? Let's say, for example, I mean, what are what are you just? What's your initial response as I ask this question to you? Of okay, I'm I'm struggling, Joe. I tried mm-hmm. what you said to do. I'm up north. I'm in the North Bay. What am I doing wrong? Or what what am I? What is your first response to somebody who asks this to you at a sports show? You know. Well, you know, one of the things that I always do is when is when when I think they should be here but they're not. I, I look at okay, what's nearby that 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 you know where they probably you know well points for example you know you've heard you've seen me you've heard me talk about this so many times oh yeah it points you know it, it, so you got these bays generally speaking on these bays there's there's a predominant one or two points there you definitely got to hit those points because you know they may not be in those bays yet. they might still be on those points you know what's interesting about what you said there joe is this, and again i'm going back to your saltwater comment it it reminds me of what you said about starting in the tributary and working mm-hmm. your way out and it's like that exactly. maybe that same idea of like start it is the same. start in that you know that that mecca yes. and if they're not yep. there go start venturing and fish your yep. way out just like you said yep start in and work your way out and 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 you can start out and work your way in but i like to start in and work your way out because then you you know you're 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 deciphering what your water temperatures are from from main lake to you know to the shallow water <clears throat> and and you're seeing you, here's the other thing that <clears throat> anglers today will struggle with you don't because you you know you're in, you're one of those transition anglers that kind of learn to do both but this is extremely important something that i see so many anglers fail on today <clears throat> i see them in the saltwater environment doing the same thing as they have their heads buried in their saltwater. i was god you're joe you and i still have our <laughs> our heads are i was literally my next question yeah. was going to be i'm like joe, instincts you talk instincts. oh god i can't believe you read my mind i was literally going to ask you maybe it's because i'm i'm yep. i'm envisioning being in the boat with you i'm like instincts. okay joe The Musky Therapy Podcast is brought to you by Joe Booker Outdoors, number one in big game fish products, and by Recon Boats, made by craftsmen, built for fishermen. Got her. Oh my gosh. You know, yep. what are you, when you talk about hunting instincts and you talk about, because it's funny, when I when I watch you fish a lot, especially like in that early part of the season, you're actually not really looking at the sonar as much as you are looking at your landscape around you you're looking yeah. at you know the i mean t- maybe talk to us about that as a hunter as an angler what are you what are you talking about when you're saying that one of the things that you know i i'm, I'm so lucky that i grew up when i did before the big reliance on electronics you know i mean if you think about it you know i grew up when the trolling motors started, when the sonar units started, can you imagine when I, when I first started fishing? No, there wasn't. There wasn't <laughs> sonar units, and then there was the first green box. 
sonar unit that would wear and wear two six volt batteries out in the day. And those big six volts, those big square t- six volts, and they make they make so much noise that you have a headache by the end of the day. Um, I mean, to the and, to the answer to your question, no, I can't even imagine this. Yeah, man, it's the first <laughs> one. I was the first guide, and when I first started guiding, and you know, and I first started guiding, my my um, my guiding, my older guiding friends used to call those electric oars. They were they were they were they were you know they <clears throat> I, they they would kid me because I didn't roll like the rest of them did. Um, so, you know, I, I actually, you know, I, I, my reliance on, on electronics, you know, even back then it was, it was, it's minimal. So I, do I rely on electronics now? Absolutely. I do, but I fall back on these, these instincts that I have attained over time. Hunting, hunting has probably refined them far beyond what fishing ever did. Um, because you know, when you're hunting big white tails, for example, you gotta be so cognizant of weather, wind direction, thermals, and all these things that, you know, that trigger, uh, where these, where these bucks are likely to hang out and how you approach them. And with fishing, you know, you've seen, you, you mean, you're the same way you now. You, you're, um, you're always watching wind direction. You're always watching light conditions and, and, and cloud cover and, and, and you know, the, the, the rising heat and humidity and the dropping of it. And, and there's, there's, you know, all of a sudden there's, there's, um, you pull into a spot and, you know, there's not, you know, wind, wind and waves, wave action, you know, you reading waves, you know, how waves come into a spot and, and, um, you know, how fish are likely to set up on spots like that versus no waves at all. You know, no wa- waves, no, you know, having a calm area, it just makes it complete. It, it just changes how fish behave and how they set up, how they set up in a spot. And, and, uh, those are instincts that you develop over time. But I guess the advice I have for your, your listeners is that, you know, you're, you have this computer in your brain, you know, you, 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 you're a walking computer yourself. You just have to learn to rely on, on, on looking around, you know, when, and, 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 and again, and again, summarize when you do have some success, even if you see a big musky, you don't catch it, but you see it, you know, you, 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 you want to talk about this all the time on your synopsis about your, about your, 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 featured video that you're going to show every week you say you know i have to i, I raised this fish you know eight times right yeah that's true got, right <laughs> yeah so you know you once you got that once you got a visual on that fish um you know you you, you, you got to start thinking and analyzing and trying to put together all okay what's why is that fish here right now why, why is this fish here right now and it wasn't here before? Why is this fish here? And then look at the wind direction. Look at all these different things. How deep was this fish? What, what's the water temperature? What's this? What's that? What was I using? How fast was I retreating? And you try to put a lot of different things together. And that's why I suggest you write them down. That's why I suggest you, especially if you once you've caught one of those fish, because then you can re- refer to the photo years from now and all the information is on the photo. I, love I, that. I write it right on the photo, you know. In, in in the digital world, you can write it right on the caption. If, you, if you're writing it on a hard copy photo, write it right on the back of your photo. Right now, there's much information as you can, so that you. It's just one of those things. I'll tell you one of the things that really taught me a lot, and I know it does you too, is because we video our our, our catches. What you think happened and what happened sometimes? I'm, I know you're, you're probably get, you're probably smiling. I am smiling. It's <laughs> not. That's not the way I remembered it. Do you ever have that happen? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, some of the biggest bucks I've shot <clears throat> when I shot them during my television years, I'd look back and go, "Oh, that's not what I thought happened." That's so. You wild. know? Yeah, it yeah, is though. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's why, you know, it, it's, it's uh, what you think happens sometimes, you know, the, the perspective, that's why you, what I, what I suggest you do is, is, is once you score on something big, all those big redfish, when I catch them, I, I, I take notes on them before I, before I, I redo my tackle and start fishing again, I, 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 I write down everything. Because I'm, you know, I'm in such a learning phase with that anyway, so it, it, I don't take anything for granted right now. <clears throat> um, but you know, all of all of your listeners, you know, you just challenge yourself and don't think you know as much as you think you do. You know, you, you don't. 
it's the more you learn, the better, the more success you're going to have. So, you know, constantly keep your mind open and and keep learning. And that, and if you do that, you'll constantly, you'll, you'll, you'll get measurably better, you know, every year, every year you, your catches will grow because you're just, you're, you're really striving to get better. Dude, 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 I have, I have another, I have, I have one more question. I don't know how long this one will take, but I think it's an important question for early season stuff. Cause this is, I'm just, I, I kind of wrote down a couple questions here that clients ask me, especially probably more so early in the season than in July and August, September, stuff like that. And one of the most common questions, and you've gotten this, you know, for decades is, well, Joe, What's your thought on speed early in the season? We t- we we kind of talked about throwing blades and we talked about baby shallow raiders, but like when we're fishing cold water, where is your head at? Just just big picture perspective from JB, where are you at with speed and cold water? Because a lot of folks get very intimidated with the speed thing, you know. Yeah, I think I think I think what's interesting is there, and and you know this is this is kind of a confusing answer, but I think it, it's it's one of those things that. You'd be surprised sometimes they'll take faster retrieves than you think they will. Hmm. And it does vary with lures. And yet at the, at there are those times, um, you know, where Joey hit it on the pause, <laughs> you know, or well, the pause, the, right. The pause is, is critical. And yet there are those baits. That's why I was talking about these lipless crankbaits. I'm amazed sometimes. Uh, that's why I rely on lipless crankbaits on a lot of occasions, you know, for for hunting new water because you can cover so much water with them. And I don't know why, but when it comes to high vibration lipless crankbaits, even in cold water, fish will smack them at high speed, at a fairly high speed. Interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. It's in, in, and at the same time, for example, you take a blade. I, I, even even shifting gears, you take uh, an October muskie will hit a f- much faster crankbait than he will a blade. Taking blades, the secret to catching big muskies on on blades in the fall, especially as the water gets colder, is a very slow yes. slow retrieve speed yes. on blades. And yet, you, you don't really have to do that with crankbaits. And you why know? is that? <laughs> right? That's so yeah. true, though. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, it, why? It, it's just It's just kind of one of those things that's It's kind of puzzling. It's like, uh, but at the same time, you can use those to your advantage, um, and you can go back on fish with different, different techniques. Um, if you raise them, for example, on a high-speed bait just to get this attention he didn't, didn't hit, now you go back and you throw a minnow bait <clears throat> with you know with with a jerk and pause and, and then you can test test different retrieve speeds to see what, what you know if, what the fish responds to best and sometimes <clears throat> you know you'll find once in a while you'll find that <clears throat> when you were you know you were, you were jerking on that minnow bait and all of a sudden you had to you scratch your you know scratch your ear or something and you, the bait was sitting there a little longer than it should have and all of a sudden the line goes tight and you got a fish out. <laughs> you know, that's that's just telling you that you know you need a longer pause on those baits, and and uh, sometimes so really you're, you're taking yeah, a we, very scientific approach to this in the sense of you you just keep experimenting, you keep yeah. trying new things, and like you said, sometimes yeah. a little bit of luck goes a long way, and you, you notice yeah. something that you didn't notice before. You know, well, and, and there's no absolutes. You know, there are no absolutes. There's there's things that you know that generally work for us that we rely on. But let's face it, a lot of times, you know, you, plan A doesn't work, and then plan, you, now you start using plan B and plan C. Um, but I think I think one of the other things that that's being, you know, that, that is being overlooked here and that, you know, that musky anglers <clears throat> who have inexperience, um, that, that don't have confidence, <clears throat> run into this a lot is they just give up and go, well, there, was, there weren't any fish here, or this, this, this technique isn't working where, <clears throat> you know, going back to our original conversation, well, you went into that bay and we didn't do anything, so now, you know, what now where do I go and what do I do? Well, I'll tell you one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go back and visit that spot again in a couple hours. God, Joe, you, you I know? can't, I'm laughing here because 
every time you keep talking, you're like, you're answering one of my questions. I was literally, this is actually, a, uh, this was literally a, a musky therapy listener. A, a question that was wrote in was like, well, okay, if I, I literally, this was the last question. I was like, I was going to say, Joe, do we have time for one more? Cause there's, uh, you know, this person asked, well, if I fish that spot and, and I think it's holding fish and I, and we're throwing whatever we're throwing, we're throwing a blade and I don't catch anything. Should I just fish my way out of the tributary or should I go back and reinvestigate it? Or where, you know, should I go back a couple hours later or like, you know. Revisit it again, especially, especially if you have a peak, you know, peak solar or lunar thing happening, you know, later in the day, you know, you hit, if you might not have hit that at a prime time, you, uh, if there's a wind switch, you know, you, you know how many times have you and I pulled into a spot when, on a wind switch? Well, dude, this and, was your most recent video. One of your, I mean, it's a video or two ago. I think you, I think you and Spence approached that one muskie, that big hog, like nine yep. times. Yep, 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 yep. And then we finally got the fish, just like you and I did with. Uh, <clears throat> oh. M M forty two or what was that Lenny in the light the low light Lenny? Oh, well, that one too. I was thinking. Of, I was thinking of the big one we caught. Um, uh, the uh, the uh, the hunt for um, Goliath. Oh, Goliath! So, gosh, you know what? So you know we we you know we knew that fish was there. We knew that fish was there. You saw that fish, and we were like, you know, okay, you know, then and, and we just reangled. Remember, we reangled the boat. And made a back cast and caught the fish. Well, and that's one of those things that's funny because as we're re-watching the footage, and I've watched that episode so many times, even I probably watch it at least, I don't know, once a year or something. But it's funny because here we are, and we had already fished through that spot, but fished you go, spot. and I remember, and your cast was actually, it was it was actually much more, I mean, it was, you cast back, I think you said, no, 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 I, we got to take one more cast back for that fish, and you fire one back in there, and that was the one. It was like, yeah. And, you know, that's kind of the same thing that happened to Spence and I in that episode you're talking about. It was like, you know, it, it, except that we it kept coming back and back and back on this fish. You know, I think it was like eight or nine hours later we finally caught it or something. I don't I don't remember. But you and I did that with, with you know, with, with Lenny. That, that, that big oh, fish low caught. light Lenny. Well, <laughs> we raised that fish so many times. And then, you know, the light, we barely have enough light. And, you know, uh, I'm throwing a shallow raider. Well, that, well wait, I got to say, though, Joe, because the funniest part about that catch, by the way, is I saw you because we had been throwing blades. I think we raised low light Lenny on blades all day. And I, the moment I saw you snap on a jointed shallow raider, it's over. It's done. <laughs> I'm like, this is this episode. I might as well make sure the camera is perfect and everything. <laughs> you, you should remember also. I said, you know, she ought to be. Boy, she's gonna be here. She's got to be right. There. It was. When it I, was almost scripted. Rock, yeah, I took that rock and I went. That's where she should be. And boom, she hit. That was unbelievable. Yeah, and and that and that going back to your listeners, um, you know, if you think about it, uh, our friends here are listening. That's revisiting a spot that. You know, whether you see it, you know, you you got a good spot like that. You revisit that thing several times uh, you know especially on small bodies of water where you don't have a, a big selection of spots you revisit those really good spots at key times in in you might get just one chance and that one chance is it could be you know a grand slammer and see joe i'm loving this so listeners out there you you know listening to listen to jb if you go out opening weekend and you're fishing the spots we're talking about and it doesn't happen on round one that's not the end of the game Got to go back no. for round two, round five, round six. And yeah. like you said, Joe, I love what, the way you phrase it, going back at a key time, whether it's a moon phase or the solar peak time. or a yes. wind change or whatever. You know? Yes, yes. And, you know, uh, we've seen this too. I, I think one of the biggest things that ex inexperienced muskie anglers need to grasp that all of your listeners who have fished for these fish for any length of time, they know that, you know, it <laughs> – a, a musky window is small most of the time and and you know it isn't like you know we're going out and we're going to just go you know we're just going to be on fish all day long it's a great thing when, when you get days like that but they don't happen very often mm -hmm. so you know you go you the the in fact, when you go home at the end of the day and you scored on one and it's the only chance you had there's that's a big victory 
you know, it's a, it's a big victory. And you, you, in those days, when you hit a big fish or you just catch a nice muskie late in the day, and it's your own, it was your only chance. You scored on a real small window, and, and you should be very happy with that success. Yes, you know? absolutely. Right, and 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 you know how many times have you you heard me say that you know it's one of my classic Bookerisms that not every day is an A day. Yes, you know, very in, true. In life, very true. Not every day in life is an A day. You know, we we'd like them to be, but more often they're C they're C and D days. <laughs> you know? and, and, right, and then you get a few B days here and there on the water. Um, but you know, when you get it, you know, when you can score on the D day, um, where you have a small window, cold fronts in the spring, probably one of the most challenging small, situations. Yeah. yeah, and you got a small solar window late in the afternoon. You know, you're finally feeling that, like, maybe I could take a jacket off kind of feeling, you know, where it's, it's just finally warmed up a little bit. You see that, you've seen the, you know, the, the, you've seen a little little jump in the water temperature, uh, but you've also can just feel that solar beat, uh, the solar, you know, thing happening. And, and all, all of a sudden, you get one strike, and you, you got a nice fish out. Right. Well, and the funny thing is that you're going to have your jacket off for 30 minutes, and then it's back on for the trip yeah. back to the launch. That's right. <laughs> and that's and it. That, and that's a victory. And that is a victory. And you know how many how many times Chaz have you caught that big fish on your on your video series where you've been after that fish and you and you've or you you've been fishless and sightless. Of, you haven't seen anything For all days, day but you, yeah. And then you scored on a big one. Those are huge victories. Huge. Oh, you're not kidding, man. And that and that's a that's a determination and a persistence and you know and and you know it's just something that musky anglers have that a lot of anglers just don't have you know you got you know hunting hunt that's why musky musky hunting muskies is so special you know and so hunting those big fish is so special because man you know it's 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 taxing it, it's it, it taxes you both oh, physically yeah. and mentally absolutely well, dude, I mean, Joe, I tell you what, man, I feel like I've I've been to the I've been to musky therapy, man. This is uh, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, this is why that's why we named the show this. I feel like after and, I, and the funny thing is, here we have, we talked for an hour now. I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like I've only talked to you for ten minutes. I mean, you I, know, you and I one of the one of the things that's always been like this is that you know we. Uh, we cover a lot of ground on the on, 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 on day of fishing or, you know, when we get together, just, there's a lot to talk about. It's, it's rarely quiet in the boat. <clears throat> oh, that's true. And yeah. well, yeah. dude, I, you know what I love about this talk tonight though, just to sum things up for our listeners here, we have this really neat endeavor that you've, you've just, you've, you've dove headfirst into the, this brackish and saltwater bite and you're catching these big bull reds. And then it's like, okay, now we're taking that experience. We're saying, okay, Joe, you know, how are you attacking that? And then how can we, as these, the musky anglers here, uh, and I know some of you that l- listen, you know, do other things. You were hunters and we fish for other species, but it's like, how can we bring this in as we're approaching, you know, opening weekend here? How can we take this into the musky realm? And I think that you've painted just a very exciting picture for us as we enter the, you know, the, our, our new open water musky season here. Um, I'm certainly fired up and I learned just it, as much as we've talked in the boat, I've already learned more just in this conversation right now, man. I really have. Well, you know, it's it's that's one of the great things about this sport. You're dealing with we're dealing with living creatures. You know, they don't always play by the rules. And and uh, about the time you think you know something, there's there's a whole different set of set of circumstances and, and conditions and things that throw a curveball into what <clears throat> like even even you know even out here in this on the saltwater thing it's big waves you know oh. big wind and big waves you can't go out <clears throat> i didn't even or think you, we you weren't know, even talking about that yeah that's a whole nother yeah, ball. You can't, <laughs> that's yeah, a whole ball a game. That. <laughs> well like you know as we as we as we uh, tape this session here you know, I got I got home and I can't get on I can't get on the water. I, I can't wait to go after these big pike on the river over here. I can't go after them because the Mother Nature doesn't allow us. It's, it's we're flooded out over here. That's it's. I hope you know, we so, get yeah. <laughs> I hope we get some of that that water up north, man. But yeah, I, the photos you that you've shared of the Mississippi, it's like oh my gosh, dude. It's yeah, you would yeah. yeah I mean, it's another it's another thing, you know. It's a, hey, hunting these. Hunting these big pike in the Missis- Mississippi up here is a monstrous body of water. 
monsters. Yeah. You know, it's like fish think of the woods. I mean, there's there's so much backwater area. There's, you know, the, the Mississippi here is the mighty Mississippi. It's big. It's got huge, you know, it's got hundreds, hundreds of acres of backwaters. Every species that's in here is big. Uh, but these pike out here, you know, nobody targets them. So they're, you know, musky class in a lot of, a lot of ways. You know, I mean, it's it's a, it's a great fishery. And, and uh, as soon as this water recedes, I'm going to go after them for a couple of weeks here in the spring and, and have a blast with them. And, and that's that's the beauty of, you know, that's the beauty of Wisconsin. You know, you got, you got, you pretty much got everything you want in one state here. You just got, you, you can tap into all these rivers and, you know, all these beautiful natural lakes. We got the Great Lakes. You got, it's just an amazing um, fishery as, as a state. It's just, you got, you got everything here. Dude, well, Joe, I, I got to tell you one thing, man. One of the most amazing, you're talking about amazing things, dude. Talking to you in your zest for continuing to learn and continuing to to just explore different waters and put yourself in situations where you're, where you're out of your comfort zone and you're trying new things and you're failing, and you're failing, you're failing again, and then you learn, and you're learning, and you're, it's it's very motivational to hear, especially from somebody like you who's been in this business for a long time, that you never stop learning, and you never stop, you know, thinking outside of the box, and just always trying to reinvent yourself, and... Dude, but remember, you know, remember even early in your guiding career, you remember me telling you that on your days off? Yep. Oh, yes. Remember that? Well, I, <laughs> I don't, remember. Don't go, I can... don't go beat up on fish you know. Yes. Don't go beat up on waters you know. Go learn something new. Yep. Go learn something new. I'm going to go. I, there's a good chance, next, for example, next winter, I'm going to go hunt a fish a, a brand new area in, in, in Florida. Even after I, I got all the stuff dialed in down there in northwest Florida in the area where I'm at in Destin, we may go to a completely new area and wow. uh, start all over again. That's awesome, man. But you know, that's part of the fun. Think how far you've grown as an angler by, you know, just stepping out of your comfort zone and really reaching out. Well, it, well, and you know what though, it, it takes being pushed. So you pushed me, and yep. I think that, and then I think that you know everybody listening here, you know, you're pushing them right now. You're saying, hey, you know, get out of your comfort zone, and whether yep. that comfort zone is only fishing early mornings. And, you know, it's like, hey, you're talking, you know, don't do that. Go go out and really try that peak solar bite. You know, just whatever that is to you listening, do something different. Don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. Here's, here's another thing. And here's something, that, you know, on the fishing side of things that I, I've always tried to challenge myself to fish with something, with a lure or in a technique that I'm not very good at. I have no confidence in it. Yeah, dude, that's tough so to that, do. That's, I mean, yes. it takes a special yes. determination yes. to do that. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yes, but you think about that. Um, I've you know, seen you do it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, but you got to do it, right? I mean, if you want to get better, musky anglers, you know, really have really have a problem with this, you know, in that they'll take you know blades and maybe top water blades and, and you know and soft rubber baits or whatever, one or two techniques, and that's it. <laughs> you know, that's it. You know, and and my suggestion has always been. You know, take that lure that you're not good with or you have no confidence in and spend some time with that bait and that will take you into a new zone as an angle. That will, Gosh, and then you, Joe. and then it opens your toolbox up more, right? It does. It's so tough to hear you say that when the bite, when the bite's tough or something, it's like, oh man, Joe, tell Joe's telling me to try something yeah. different. But then again, I could say on the, on the opposite side of the, the argument, say, well, I ain't doing any good anyway. And Joe said, try something new. Maybe I should try right. something new. You know, I, that's how I, that's how I really discovered the spoon bite down here uh, on the, on the, on the saltwater scene. That's how I discussed, that's how I really perfected my jig fishing with, you know, back when you and I were doing those, filming those bass segments in the spring and those, that swim jig fishing. Yeah. Think about those fishable swim yes. jigs. I mean, before that, you, you know, you're throwing crankbaits, you're throwing some spinner baits. All of a sudden we're throwing swim jigs. <laughs> and it's like, holy cow, these things really catch fish. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's with musky anglers, it's boy. You know, take a category, take a genre of baits that you're not good at, and 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 discipline yourself. Discipline. It's a it's a tough word, but discipline. And you know, if you discipline yourself to do something you're not good at, 
And that might even be not even a lure. That might be, you know, fishing a certain sections of water or certain kinds of, you know, like open water or, or, or deep structure, trolling, deep water, you know, crankbait fishing, um, shallow slop fishing, something you're not good at and challenge yourself discipline yourself to try that uh, you know playing guitar i, I sent you a couple a, a couple things this winter i said you know i don't know if i could play that real fast rockabilly stuff you know so i, I started playing some of that stuff and it's like hey i can do this so you can do well, it, yeah. you, you can do this but you have to try it so you know, so getting back and as i and i you know i'll pull our listeners out you know big picture here i think listening to you kind of talk tonight it's very interesting this you know, here we are talking early season muskies, but this this surpasses the simple idea. Okay, what do I got to go North Shore, heat soaked, cover? It's like no, nah, there's there's actually there's a bigger picture ideology to be successful in this sport we call fishing. It's not just the okay, I'm gonna go north, I'm gonna find some cover, and I'm gonna catch a muskie. It's like not nah, it's not that simple. There's really there's a there's a bigger picture. Of, of a journey as an angler to become successful consistently. Would I be correct in kind of saying Absolutely. that in a way? You just nailed it. You just nailed There's it. There's more exactly. to it than just, yep. you know, okay, yep. Joe says go north and, and cast a yep. spinner bait. And it's like, no, nah, you know, there, there's there's a bigger picture mentality or there's more going on. And it's, it's not as much, and it's funny because now we're coming real full circle to our conversation a couple of days ago. It's not, it's not about, well, I guess what I wanted to say is it's it's more about the journey as an angler more so yeah. than it is, you know, dialing into some of these like, you know, fine topics. It's really think, you know, it it's looking at yourself from a from a big picture view and saying, "Okay, what do I need to really improve on?" Um yep. it's yep. It, that's that's it's a big it's a big uh it's a tall order, but it's exciting it nonetheless. Is. Yes, and 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 you know, one of the best things that your listeners your your listeners can can do to also improve their just to really improve their game is to forget the whole thing with hunting for rainbow lakes and, and you know secret spots and just take your favorite body of water that you like the fish that you have confidence in that you enjoy being at and the, your favorite lodge and resort all that, that that's all good just learn it better Wow. Just take the time to actually learn it better. You know, and the more you learn, the more you learn, the luckier you get. The more you learn about that body of water, the more you learn about the lures you're fishing, the more you learn about the conditions and how to react to those conditions, how the fish live in those conditions, and how, you know, how, doing what's good, what's bad. And the more you learn, the luckier you get. Wow. And I, I don't want to, I could, I could, I got, I could, Joe, we could talk forever because I got more questions. I was thinking like, boy, even back in your, in your youth, Phantom, wasn't it, isn't that the story about Phantom Lake, by the way, that like yes. you started catching all these big bass and the locals yep. and the guides were like, what the heck's going on? You know? <laughs> yes. Yes. It, it's funny. It's funny because I, even, even back in those days, you know, I, I think back in those days and man, there's so many things that was so close. I, yeah, I was, I was, I was cracking some codes there. You know, there's no doubt about that. But uh, you know, it's it's um, it's so funny how all of us in life you can look back and go, oh man, if I'd have just done this or I'd just done that. Right. You're so close sometimes. You know, in, in that it you just yeah you just gotta you gotta push the limits of what you you know what you're doing and 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 learn. The more you learn, the luckier you get. Wow. Well, Joe, again, I I can't thank you enough, man. This has been absolutely incredible having you on musky therapy long long it. overdue and just man what a what a great you know just just conversation and just uh, you know way of thinking to get us fired up for uh, for a new year man well and I, I know one thing <clears throat> as soon as that as soon as uh, you get that boat in the water you'll be you'll be tearing it up like you always do and and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm enjoying watching you and, and as an angler grow and and uh, and uh, you know it's 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 fun for you know your listeners you know it's 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 your your buddy Chaz your he, it's just great <clears throat> to see somebody that I've watched the whole journey. I've seen the whole thing. I've, I, 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 from the first time I met you at a sports show when you were just a youngster to running into you at, at a grocery store and saying, hey, <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you jump in a boat with me and be my cameraman for a summer? And then you having your own show and, and you know, it's just, 
um, I couldn't be more proud of what you're, you know, what you've done and what you've become. And, and uh, I think that, uh, you know, you're an example of, you're a great example of this is the way it's supposed to be done. This is how you, this is, this is the growth process. And this is what, this is what can happen. You know, when you, when you actually, you know, if you, once you, once you start cracking, you cracking those codes and you get, you can strive and push yourself to get a little bit better every year, but you've, you just, I mean, you're just, you're, you're, you're killing it, dude. You're just well, knocking. Well, that's very, it's very kind of you to say that, Joe. And I would, I oh, will just, are. I'll answer by, I'll, I'll, I'll kindly answer by saying, well, a, a lot, a lot of my success that I and my customers have been able to have is because I listened and I studied. And I and, and and it got me in a place where, you know, it was uncomfortable at first because you're like you said you're not on your you're not doing what you usually do and you got to get out there and try something different. But yep. that's when you're growing. That oh, is when you're growing. Uh, you know, I I watch it with I watch it with you. I watch it with you from our early trips when <clears throat> you struggled to catch a couple with me to to where hey. The dude is catching the majority of them. I mean, you're, it's, just, it's just great. It's just, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing to see that kind of stuff happen. And I couldn't be more proud of you. And at the same time, I know that you got, you got all kinds of frontiers that you're still going to bust loose and, and uh, you're doing really well. And, and uh, well, you I, know I what, really what it was though, is just the darn JB Rattler. We just had to keep, <laughs> we just had to keep, <laughs> it's like, who, whose turn is it to pick up the JB Rattler? <laughs> And then, and then there are times when it's something else. You know, Black Bart. You know? <laughs> yeah, or it's Great Flame 500s. Oh. Or it's, you know, that's the thing, too, is, is you know, there's these, uh, you know, <clears throat> you you got to just keep, keep, keep an open mind, keep doing different things. And, you know, when you're having fun, that's the other thing is always have fun. You know, it's if you, if you take the sport so seriously that you you stop having fun and and you you know you you get so frustrated with the sport that you're you know you're you're at the at the at the brink of giving it up or you you know you just don't want to do it anymore or, or you get too frustrated when you when you hook and lose a big fish or you don't get him to strike. Those are tough. Those are tough tough things. Those are tough moments on people. And, and, and we all go through it. I mean, even, you know, missing a big buck with, but, you know, missing a shot on a big buck after all the efforts you put in to get in range. And, and no matter what your quarry is, it's, it's, uh, and there's no guarantees, you know, but you gotta, you just gotta, hey, you just gotta <clears throat> pick yourself up, check your line, check your knot, sharpen your hooks and make another cast. So true, man. Because yeah. as as you and and I think on a, a, a hopefully a future podcast we'll talk about how the next cast could be a sixty plus inch fish or you know a, a, you know you just never know I think it's you've next said that so many be times a forward, that's for sure. the next cast could change your season or change yeah, your you life at, <laughs> yeah you look at the big ones you know you, you and you and I've even done together you shared shared the boat together on it's like. You know, yeah, this is you know here you know that you're just working that jerk bait. And we're just field testing a jerk bait. And it's like you know this is there's some big bowlers a little further to the right. Boom, boom you know, Dude. you know it's those moments you can't you can't script them. They're they're just there and and you know all the things we talk about even here in, in these podcasts and we write about it. We show it in videos. You got to be there. You got to you got to go out there and, and and you know enjoy, whether it's a weekend, whether it's a week, one week trip that, that you most of your listeners get to go fishing for these to chase these fish, uh, or a week you know a couple weekends here and there. It's like just give it everything you got, enjoy every moment, every enjoy every fish, because well, exactly you know, exactly yeah yeah they're all fun and, and those big fish moments are really special. Yes, they are, man. Oh my yep. gosh, you're getting me so fired up, Joe. Major, major dude. You got me fired up talking about it, <laughs> dude. He's gonna wait for the. Well, you got you gotta you gotta go after turkeys in the next week first, and yes, then I go for turkeys next week. Yep. And then by yep. the time I think you, you hopefully bag a nice turkey, and then the water levels will come down, and you'll be at chasing the pike before you know it. You got it, and then uh, you know, I'll be over by you in a, in, in a while. But chase with chase some muskies together. Oh, dude, I can't wait. Oh my god. Me too. I'm very me excited. Too. All my best to you, buddy. Oh, thanks. Well, everybody, uh, there there he is, uh, National Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame legendary angler, 
Joe Booker. Uh, Joe Booker, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. We cannot wait to have you back soon. This has been an absolutely uh, fantastic episode. So, everybody, uh, we really hope you enjoyed this episode of Musky Therapy, and uh, we hope you uh, tune in next time to, to hear another episode soon. So, take care, everybody.